Haley. You just don't really look like the kind of guy who has to meet girls over the internet. <laughs> well, I think it's better to meet people online first. Get to know what they're like inside. You work as a photographer, you find out real quick. People's faces lie. Does my face lie? <laughs> So good. Do you, do you want some? Sure. <laughs> mm. You look older than you are. You certainly act older than you are. Really? Want to call your sister? Tell her where you'll be? Maybe later. I'm reading um, Romeo and Juliet. It's a ninth grade book, but. I figured I could have it done before the school year starts. Didn't know you're interested in that kind of thing. You thought since we've been chatting for three weeks that you knew everything about me? These were all shot here? My house is my studio. I recognize this girl. The things you do wrong. They haunt you. This is officially sick. I have never hurt anyone! It's just so easy to blame a kid. Who are you? Playtime is over. Now it's time to wake up. This would be... Episode 107, if wow. I am correct. I should know because I just put out the la the most recent one, and I made the art for it this afternoon, but I'm totally blanking. Do the random bonus episode, so I kind of lost track. I guess that would probably be easier if I just look at the picture that's one of the most recent things <laughs> on my phone. See, I can't rely on the pictures because I always have the numbers wrong on them. <laughs> like, I have to go back and, like, correct them. I usually, I, I feel the same way when I'm doing them, so I pull up my uh, list of podcasts on my iPad and finish the number on my phone while I'm looking at it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, because I'm sure that I didn't get it right the first time. So, yeah, this should be episode... 107. Good. I like seven. Seven's a good number. Yeah, seven is a good number. <laughs> Which is... Oh, no. So so you listened to the Cherry Falls, so then you heard me butcher your name. I did. I was going to introduce <laughs> myself as Dayron. Oh, and... please do. Please do. Okay. <laughs> it, ha it has happened forever. Um, real quick is my parents were super hippies. Mm -hmm. And my name is from one of the J.R.R. Tolkien books, the Silmarillion. Don't oh, know. Oh wow! It's no. Nope. It's the one that nobody <laughs> ever talks about. It's like the history book for the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. I haven't read any of them. <laughs> I've seen into films. It. The films are cool. I like some of the cartoons. Uh, I think the Hobbit movies were a little less good than the Lord of the Rings movies. And it's really cool that it's Peter Jackson. So it is, yeah, it's Darren. But Darren is an elven musician who created an alphabet for all the whatever the fuck to uh, communicate with each other. Well, see, that's cool you, like, have a story behind your name, though. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to introduce myself as Dayron. <laughs> Were you laughing at that? <laughs> I, I was, just because... Uh, because of how many times it's happened. Yeah, Heather had to correct me. I was, like, trying to, like, pronounce it out. <laughs> like, no, it's actually Darren. <laughs> <laughs> I think she first called me Darian anyway, so it's all good. Oh, really? <laughs> I love Heather. Yeah, she's awesome. She's been on here a handful of times. We did The Platform. That's a good movie. A couple others couple other she was yeah anyway blah 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 uh yeah. I, <laughs> rambles can happen on here but also we can stick pretty close to the movie usually i just sort of do the introduction and try to find a segue into the movie which basically you you said seven's a good number 
which is multiply that by two. That is how old Haley is in Hard Candy. Yeah. She's supposed to be 14. I'll probably switch back and forth because the character is a girl, but Elliot Page is a guy. So I'll probably... Well, I think it's okay to probably talk about... Or, well, we'll probably talk about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The character calls themselves a girl. They're called Haley. Yeah, we'll, yeah we'll, we'll talk about that. If you want, yeah. since I'm so rambly anyway and loosey-goosey on the show, I can start the show and then we can go from there. Okay. Like, um, yeah, I mean, Cut to the Chase doesn't have, like, a format either. We just go, you know, so. Awesome. <laughs> I don't know how much of <laughs> that last bit anybody heard because I started recording a short bit ago. But welcome to episode 107 of the Psycho Semantic Podcast. I am Dayron, and here with me for the first time, hopefully not the last time, is Lacey Lou from all of your favorite podcasts. But first comes to mind are The Slumber Party Massacre and Cut to the Chase. Add the rest, uh, skip to my Lou, or skip to the Lou, skip to my Lou. Uh, skip to the Lou. Okay. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for being on here. Yeah, thank you for having me, Dayron. We fell into this episode. I think you were talking about Hard Candy. Yeah, I watched it for uh, one of my uh, 61 days of hashtag spooky season. <laughs> and yeah, this has been on my list uh, since the show started about f a little over four, almost five years ago. And nobody's claimed it yet, so I'm glad you jumped on it. I love this movie. When did you first see Hard Candy? Um, God, what year did it come out? Uh, was it like, oh, four, maybe? Yeah, 2004, two th uh, Wikipedia said 2005, but it's Wikipedia. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I would have been in high school, and we didn't see it in the theater, but my mom wanted to, like, rent it, like, right away. Um... She's a Patrick Wilson fan, apparently. Uh, um, but, um, yeah, so she she had rented it, and um, we had a girls' night with my grandma. My, all my family is, like, really into, like, movies and horror movies. And um, so we had a, a night of it of uh, – we had a movie night watching this movie with my grandma, my grandpa, my mom, and my sister. And – I remember we were just, like, all kind of crowded around, like, um, and my grandma's, I was sitting on the floor, and everybody just really dug the movie, and I remember my grandma had made chili that night, so it was, yeah, so it was definitely, it's weird that I can remember, like, little details about certain films, <laughs> and where I was the first time I watched it. Yeah, movies and songs can be cool like that. Yeah, I mean, this was... Like, obviously, 2005, so I think I would have either... I, I want to say I was probably, like, a junior or a senior, because I graduated in 06, so depending on when it actually like came out. But um, it was probably, like, one of the last movies that I probably got to watch with my mom, so that's kind of cool. That's pretty cool, yeah. Were you uh, big on, uh, what, AOL? I think that's what they were on, the AOL chat shit. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, God. Uh, AIM, do you remember that? Yes. AIM. Yeah, my AIM uh, screen name <laughs> was uh, XOXO Cute Kisses XO. So that's probably why my mom wanted me to watch this movie. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty close to Thong Girl 14. Yes, like, <clears throat> oh, my voice, sorry. Um, a lot of my friends have really stupid names like that. So, um, it's definitely a product of its time, um, so I think it probably hits home for probably girls my age, or well, we're women now, I suppose. I still feel like I'm young, but, um, I mean, when you think about it, that's like 15 years ago at this point, so. <laughs> yeah, we were all younger 15 years ago. I graduated about five years before you did. Mm. See, I never know how old, like, anybody is, but I would have thought you were, like, around my age. Not saying that, like, five years is, like, anything. It's, like, nothing difference now, right? Well, it could mean a lot when you get older. <laughs> well, no, I feel like age doesn't matter as you get older. 
Now, if you're like Patrick Wilson in Hard Candy, and you're talking to 14-year-old girls, then your age matters. <laughs> very, very much so. And they, they make it clear, well, I think they make it pretty clear that there's an 18-year difference. 18, so how old would he be there then? If she was 14, he'd be 32. So he would be a year younger than I am right now. What does that tell you? <laughs> Creeping on teenager, eighth, uh, Haley is supposed to be in eighth grade. It's, of course, we, I, I mean, we spoil the shit out of everything. Plus, we just said that this movie is 15, 16 years old. But, well... She's not the most reliable source of information, per se, because everything that Haley or Thong Girl 14 says to <laughs> Jeff the Lens Man 319 is to get him where she wants him. Right. That was one thing that like, I was kind of always wondering. Do you think she was actually 14, or do you think she was older? I. It's hard to say. I've known a lot of super wicked smart 14 year olds but I always kind of thought she was a little bit older. Elliot was 17 when they made this right? Uh, and uh, I believe Patrick Wilson was actually not I, he is not 18 years older in real life. Right. <laughs> um, 1987 and Wilson was born in 73. So 87 and 73, that's like 15. So a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> I thought it was a lot closer, but I suck at math. I... Yeah, so Elliot Page is actually my age in real life. February 21st, 1987. I'm November, so Elliot's just slightly older. Just a bit. And Canadian. So, but I remember like, I remember being like in 2005 and I probably looked a lot really young too. Um, I was like 90 pounds. <laughs> it's crazy how you get like older than all the weight like comes on. It's crazy. <laughs> it's like, why? I, I just... know. <laughs> it's not fun. But there was one scene in the movie that made me question the age, which was, uh, you know, when Haley has the book, the medical book. And it's obviously like a college level book. So either Haley was in high school taking like accelerated classes, or I thought maybe Haley was a pre med student. Could be. Uh, that's. I, I, I've never performed a, a castration, but <laughs> I can't imagine it being as simple as Haley was talking about it. Well, technically, Haley didn't perform one either. Oh, the. Of course. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. Did I spoil it? <laughs> no, I don't know why that I just totally forgot about that part. <laughs> <laughs> that, that she didn't actually perform one either. <laughs> yeah, it, it would. I would have been totally fine if Jeff had been castrated. I think everybody would have. And I even saw an interview with the scriptwriter who kept calling Haley the protagonist. Mm-hmm. So. Well, like, you know, Jeff isn't a good guy, like, right away, like, when uh, they meet up at the coffee shop or whatever it is, and he goes and he, like, takes the chocolate from her lips, which this is, like, one of the most grotesque moments in movie history for me, honestly. Like, it's so cringe. And then he licks it himself. Like, I don't know about you, but that's just, like, I, like even if we were of age... <laughs> like, if they were of age, I don't want anybody taking chocolate from my lips and putting it on theirs. I think that's disgusting. <laughs> especially on a first meet. Right. Like, you don't know who this person is, especially now in the times that we're living in with COVID. Let me, <laughs> let me rub my thumb on your face. <laughs> and, like, obviously, Haley was a... Well, Ellen at the time, now Elliot. Um... It's kind of hard to transfer that, you know, because um, that's who Elliot was at the time. So if I offend anybody by, you know, talking about that and I don't say the right things, I apologize in advance because it is a little bit tricky to adjust. We're all working um, on it. Yeah, we can all do better. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I 
always thought that Elliot Page was a great actor slash now actor. I haven't actually got to see anything that Elliot has done since, you know, transitioning. Um, but I always thought that when they were younger, they were a star. Loved Juno and in our uh, oh god Inception. Inception. I almost said Insid- I almost said Insidious. <laughs> like <laughs> not too far off Patrick Wilson. Whip it. I I saw Whip it in the theater. Is that the skater girl movie? Yeah. Or roller roller derby. Did you ever play roller derby, or is that just a female sport? I think it's just a female sport i know a decent amount a lot of the roller derby people here intermingle with the punk music scene Mm. so uh they they uh ohio it's either ohio or central ohio roller derby um they is that where you are ohio yes oh okay so iowa and ohio we got representing this episode midwest (laughs) Yes. Sometimes Ohio gets left off of lists of the Midwest, but I don't know where else it would be. The North North Midwest? I don't know. I went through Ohio when I was traveling uh, to the East Coast um, to meet up with Dan. We had like a two-month sabbatical where I went to Massachusetts, and I was actually, because Ohio is like right next to Pennsylvania, right? Yep. That's that's what uh, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania. Yeah, so, like, on my way back, I had, like, the scariest thing happen to me. And so I went in in the end of September. Actually, it was in 2018, today, um, that I drove all the way to Massachusetts. Um, So, yeah, that was, what, three years ago now? That's crazy. And then I came back in, like, the beginning of December. And as soon as I hit Ohio like a snowstorm like hit it was like december 4th and i was like it was really scary like i never drove across the country by myself before aside from going to massachusetts and then i was coming back to iowa right and a snowstorm hit like as soon as i got to ohio and i I split it up into like two hour days like um or two 10 hour days because it's like a 21 hour drive and um so i had my hotel pre-booked or whatever and i stayed at like the red roof inn and it took me so long to get to this hotel um but i finally got there i got there at like 10 30 11 o'clock at night and i just like crashed and so i could drive early the next morning and i go into the i'm like all my stuff like i because i had packed like my whole life and um so like my car was like packed with like everything and like i had my dog with me and so the car had frosted over so i had to go out and start it to warm it up the next day early in the morning it was like five in the morning it was still really dark out and so i went back into the room and like gathered up my dog and everything and left my car running and i came back out all of my car doors were open and the trunk was open but nothing was missing it was like the scariest thing because like i'm by myself for like the first time ever and and it was just it was like i freaked out and i was just like oh my god it's like (laughs) that was a really stupid story i don't know why i told it that well because we brought up ohio i'm I'm imagining (laughs) you were driving more towards the north by the lakes and canadian border um, it was coming through, like, I went through Pennsylvania to Ohio to Indiana to Iowa. Okay. I live right in the middle in Columbus. Okay. Yeah, no, I was just, um, like, I didn't, like, stop or, like, do, like, destination tour or anything like that. Like, I just wanted to get in the car and get home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is a long drive. I don't know if the longest drive one way or non non stopping for a bit of time drive was from here to Manchester, New Hampshire. Mm. Because the first tour my band went on, we were super stupid and we decided to start up there and drive all the way. And that I think that's 19 hours. Yeah, it's a it's a long drive. <laughs> Fortunately, I didn't have to do any of that, but I have been to Iowa. I've played a show in Cedar Rapids. 
Cedar Rapids. Yeah. I'm in Des Moines. You'll have to, you should see about playing at Woolies. Like, they have a lot of um, awesome bands that come through there. Going on tour is a blast. Haven't gone in the last six years since my son was born. Aw. You still play, though, right? Yeah, yeah, I still play. I've got my regular drum set outside the room because there's not a room, not enough room for me to podcast with my drum set in here, but I've got a soundproofish room in my garage. The garage? Hey, fellas, the garage. Well, ooh la dee da, Mr. Frenchman. Well, what do you call it? A car hall. So I've got my drum kit out there, and I've got an electric drum set when I get super lazy and I just want to record straight into my computer or work with somebody online there you go so yeah i still i still jam but mostly doing the the dad stuff lately well i told you about how i heard about this movie you haven't told me how you watched this movie oh i was told about this movie by somebody in one of my uh I'm going to say a generic term because I don't remember the exact name of the class, but uh, like a women's studies class. You were in a women's studies class. Well, took, look at you. Took some of those. <laughs> Did they help? I think I think those plus growing up surrounded by badass women helped me. But it, it was cool, and I definitely enjoyed it. I started out as a journalism major, and then about halfway through my advisor said hey you'll be able to do journalism jobs with an english degree and straight up journalism is dying so you might want to do something that you can end up doing more with than a journalism degree so took a lot of english and film classes and women's studies and stuff stuff on comic books and just ridiculous stuff that they offer for the uh you know arts degrees <laughs> and yeah did a lot of stuff on horror movies in my women's studies i grabbed some old stuff that breaks down the somebody wrote some academic papers on the length that males versus females are killed on screen and how more likely they are to be killed after doing certain um actions that are deemed wrong by like the rules yeah don't you know the rules what rules you don't jesus christ you don't know the rules <laughs> stuff like that worked, worked a lot of horror movies and stuff into whatever i could um so somebody oh. was just asked if i had seen it and i said nope <laughs> so they told me to go check it out and thought it was amazing i <laughs> even though Haley does have some the some of the moments where she's like pulling at her hair and throwing herself up against the wall it makes me a little bit nervous about her but right. i don't think i don't think for a minute it's really doubted that uh jeff is a shit person like you said all the way back at the beginning where he's wiping Haley's mouth and then saying well the shit he said in the chat thread to start the movie out right just totally pervy talking to him. of course yeah people pretend to be all kinds of people on the, on the internet like like Haley did and sort of like he was but it's like a uh, show catfish you ever watch that I haven't you've I never watched catfish uh -uh. oh my god it's like <laughs> Okay, like, all right, so uh, Neve Shulman, he did a movie, and I remember, like, when that movie first came out, um, we all thought it was going to be, like, a horror movie. Have you seen the movie? The movie Catfish? Yeah. No. Okay, so there's a movie Catfish. Like, I don't know if I want to spoil it now. <laughs> is, it a, is it a real-life movie, or is it a horror movie? Well, all right, so when this movie came out, um, like, the trailers led it to believe that it was going to be, like, this horror movie, right? Okay. <laughs> because it's about uh, this guy who, who um, starts to talk to this girl online, and he's going to meet up with her. Um, well, she won't. She's, like, lying about who she is, or um, he doesn't, he just wants to meet her, but she, like, keeps giving, like, the age-old answers, like, ah, oh, 
you know, my camera's broken, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. And um, so he's like, all right, we're going to find out who this, who I'm actually talking to. So, like, the trailer, like, if you look at the trailer, it totally looks like a horror movie. I Watch it after we get done here. <laughs> and um, it's not a horror movie, like, at all. But it find, you find out that, like, the, he was being catfished. It wasn't who he was really talking to. Um, I don't want to spoil it if you're going to watch it. But from there, um, MTV ended up creating a TV show with him. And uh, people would write into him. You've seen the trailer or something for it, right? Yes. I just okay, so, but it is literally, like, it's sad, but it's really hilarious. Like, one dude thought, like, he was dating Katy Perry. Um, and it's literally the, and he's like, no, I'm really talking to Katy Perry. Like, you couldn't, like, get through to him. Like, so, what, so Neve was like, you're not talking to Katy Perry, dude. So they find out who's been catfishing him, right? And takes him to, um, the person that's supposedly Katy Perry, and she's like, no, it's me, or whatever, you know, and he's like, no, I don't believe you, and, like, he still didn't even believe that he was not talking to Katy Perry. <laughs> People will bend over to all sorts of yoga teacher positions to keep themselves convinced what they think is true. Right? But there's some really funny episodes, like, definitely, um... If you ever, like, take edibles or anything like that, I definitely recommend watching it because it's a trip. <laughs> awesome. I'll put it on the list. I wasn't sure if the movie was about... It doesn't sound like it is, but I had first read something about a football player from, I think, Notre Dame who got catfished sometime forever ago. Maybe 2010? Seven? Something like that. Are you talking about the uh, movie Catfish? No, in real life. There was a big story about a football player. Um, oh, oh, yeah. Who was that? Um, I remember that. Oh, God. Um, he had a cool name. Like Mon Monty Monte Teo or something like that. Oh, uh, hang on. Uh, it, oh, God. Um, hang on. Football player. Uh, Manti, or Tio, Man Manti Tio? Yes, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, he was catfished in a girlfriend hoax, apparently. Notre Dame, yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I think he was on the, um, that Netflix did a documentary on Aaron Hernandez, and I think they brought him up for some reason, that's how I remember that story. Uh, the Aaron Hernandez, the documentary about him, him. Uh, do they? Do we have to say alleged murder? Uh, well, no, he's just a murderer. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, I think. I mean, unless you th think that he's alleged. No, no, I couldn't remember what he got convicted of. Like, he killed like three people, at least that I know of. Yeah. And then himself, but people are saying that he did it. I and mean, it's sad. Like, he had the whole. His whole career ahead of him like he didn't need to you know it's it's sad yeah that was still uh keeping in touch with some of the wrong people from back home right yeah um well i mean he seemed like he was in charge though so maybe people shouldn't have been keeping in contact with him true you know he sounds like he was trouble do you watch football Occasionally, a show that I used to be on, the Midnight Horror Show, we still have a football league, a fantasy football league, but I do better the less I watch, so I actually haven't watched any this year. I was, <laughs> I was close last year. I am on my second year of fantasy football, and I suck. <laughs> I just won my first game, uh, because I also have like the, uh, the John Madden video game cover curse whenever I pick the, my best player that I pick gets hurt on the first play of the first game. And this one was uh, Danny Trioxin, the guy that runs it. He accidentally set the draft to be before the last preseason game. And my big guy blew out his ACL in the last preseason game after I drafted ah. him. Which, you know, much worse for him. But it is something that always happens when I play. <laughs>
Yeah, no, um, I don't have any idea what I'm doing. I'm just going with statistics. <laughs> I'm one in three right now. <laughs> one in three? One in three. Had I played three people that were on my bench, I would have won my game. I just need to be more mindful of that. And I switched out my quarterback, and I shouldn't have did that. So I'm afraid to switch out. My, my quarterback is Patrick Mahomes. So, well, you got a good quarterback. I have yeah. like Jim Burrows, and then I have two rookie quarterbacks. I have Mac Jones and uh, Trevor Lawrence. Oh, okay. Who are who are your teams? I know you seem to know about the Patriots. Uh, with I do from know Massachusetts. About... Well, I all right. So I am not just a Patriots fan because of Dan. Um, I have been a Patriots fan since ninety seven, ninety eight era, pre Tom Brady. Thank you. Um, I made a bet. Or... <laughs> oh God, I made a, a bet with my mom. Um, it was whenever the Packers. It was I think it was like the '97 Super Bowl. Might have been '98. Um, my mind is not as good as it used to be. Um, <laughs> but I had saved up a hundred dollars, like in change, right? And I was a Packers girl, like because my whole family loved the Packers, right? Um. And or my dad did anyway, so I was following his lead, I guess. But so, so my mom was like, "All right, I'll bet you your hundred dollars in change that um, my team will win the Super Bowl, and um, if you win, I will give you, I'll match your hundred dollars, right?" So she bet on the Packers, and I bet on the Patriots. I lost my hundred dollars. <laughs> But that's okay, because um, even though the Patriots lost, it caused me to root for somebody that I didn't know anything about. So ever since then, like, I just rooted for them. 2008, I made a bet with my stepdad. Um, I was like, you know what? I think the Patriots are going to win every single game this year, including the Super Bowl, and I'll bet you $500. And he's like, every single game? I said, every single game. And he goes, all right, I'll take that bet. I was fucking stupid. But um, actually, the Patriots won every single game except the Super Bowl. (laughs) So I lost $500. Uh, By then, you were committed. I was. I was like, so, I was like, I'm going to win fucking $500. (laughs) I didn't. But um, it was a hell of a season, and um, it like they didn't even show play in the Super Bowl. Like, uh, I don't want to talk about it. But <laughs> it was a good season, nonetheless. I just, I just shouldn't put money on them. Ah, so <laughs> like, it's your uh, fault. Yeah, I, yes, I, I believe it is. So, like, the last time they lost the Super Bowl, I had pre, they had won the year before, and I had preemptively bought a game-winning cake for the Patriots, and congratulations, Patriots, and, like, I had a big Super Bowl party, and they fucking lost, and nobody ate the cake. (laughs) (laughs) So, like, I just can't, like, I can't run my mouth, I can't talk shit, like, I just have to enjoy the ride. Speaking of rides, Jeff talks Haley into, well... I think at this point, I think she kind of gets him to talk her into going back to his house for the for her plan to take place. He yeah. Gets her, yeah. He gets her back to the house. They always say never let them get you to the second location. But Haley's the one getting Jeff to the second location in this in this situation. Now, were you suspicious of her? At the beginning of the movie, at this point, I would say yes, just because of the cover. Right. Uh, first, yeah, first time I saw it, it was connected with that poster of the little red riding hood and the bear trap, basically. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay, something, something's going to happen. But lots, so many movies start with somebody thinking that they're in control of a situation and it not going well. I think Jeff had like, already it ended very badly for her. Yeah. This was a sloppy kill. From what we can understand, she already did this once. 
as she tells. Yeah, but we don't find that out till like the very end, though. That's true, but in in red, I guess we can get to that point then. Yeah. But here it starts out what? I mean, they have so many things, so many things people are supposed to avoid when they're in situations like this. There's the him getting her back to his house. Nobody knows where she is, as far as we know. He paid in cash at the bookstore, so there's not a paper trail. I don't know if that's on purpose or if that's just... It's 2005, people paid in cash more often. He hands Haley the drink. She says the thing about not taking things that you didn't see poured for you. And this is really when the next phase of her thing kicks off is she drugs the vodka. Haley starts doing the the dancing. I don't know how good of a dancer yeah, they are. Yeah, it, it seems pretty over the it seems pretty over the top when she's dancing and she's like just take my photos and like I was always a bit confused about like the photos that like he had on the wall. Like of because so women. like Yeah. Like, I'm confused. Like, I was confused because, so, when, like, he has the safe or whatever. I know we're not there, but, like, we're getting there. Um, and it only has the one that, of the girl that she was talking about. Like, was had he only done this one other time and this was a second time? Oh, with the, what was her name? Was it Janelle? The person that he wrote 319 on the back of the photo for? The ones in his room? The ones around his room, do you think that they were, like, actual models? Or do you think that um, he had killed them, too? I think there were probably pictures of people he killed in that safe that we find later. But I think the, the faceless women or the headless women around his apartment are part of his, this is my work studio, everything's just modeling, everything's official, you can do this and that. Although... Again, something that we'll come to later when he sort of snaps and he just stabs the photo in the crotch repeatedly. There seems to be an aggression there in more ways than one when he's yelling about women. But I think the woman in his bedroom was either his first victim or who he wanted to have been his first victim. I think that maybe he had... I don't think that they had killed anybody prior to that girl. I think she had just been the one, like, it had gotten taken too far. Um, But obviously, like, he had used his advantage of being a um, photographer um, creepily. And I think, like, he had preyed on younger girls. But I think this was the first time and only time that he had actually killed somebody, maybe. Because there was only just her information in there, you know? And as far as we know, just, well... I feel like the Haley character would have brought up if there... Uh, that was a really good point. Uh, if Haley would have brought up more of the victims if there was proof of more victims. How do you think it was that she found him, though, aside from... I mean, she said she had tried multiple times online and he would only talk to girls, like, of her age. But she obviously knew who he was. Um, but what about the friend? How Did she get him, like, the same way? Yeah, somehow, I think that it was probably, hmm, part of the problem is that we don't really know who Haley is. We don't know how much of what Yeah. they, well, we know that they say that pretty much everything that Haley told Jeff is bullshit, but then she does have a sister who picks her up, as far as we know, I guess that could be a friend also. So, like you said, supposedly, yeah, she could be in college. Probably took herself there. (laughs) So I think I don't know if it started out like. Did you see any of the things about how they came up with the idea for the movie? No. The producer saw some stories about these young girls in Japan who were luring creepers online to places and then beating the shit out of them and robbing them. As they should. Right. So that sort of <laughs> that sort of gave him the seed of the idea, and then he found a playwright because he. And I think this is a good idea. The way he said it was, 
you're going to have a movie that takes place basically two people in a room together the whole time, you might want to have somebody that's good at writing plays. So he just sort of came up with that idea, and they all worked on it together, and Elliot added some genuineness to the age and stuff. But right. if if just taking that idea, the young girls luring creepers, Haley or whoever they are, could have found the first guy who, if we also believe what Jeff says, is the one that likes to kill little girls. It could have gone just basically her thinking that she's trapping, what does she say, Aaron? So it could have been just that she fell into this whole thing, that uh, Haley was just going to fuck with creepers, and it turned into something bigger. Because while they, they are pretty good at planning things out you can see in points in the movie that Haley doesn't always have control Haley sometimes is really bad at spontaneous moments if things change from the main plan right I feel like maybe she knew the girl that they had killed um Donna Mauer yeah it felt like um you know, this was a very much revenge plot. So maybe it was like a friend of hers or something along those lines. And it, it it's funny that, um, you know, they claim to be, or, you know, Jeff claims to be like a good person. Um, they always do, right? <laughs> um, but like, if that wasn't his intent or like, obviously they had been doing it for a while, but I don't know if they had killed anybody else's where, um, I think that's where they're, fault might have came up as killing that one person because I, I think that they had probably been doing it for a long time and until that like obviously like Haley wasn't any none the wiser and then that's why I think that maybe she had been friends with the girl that they had murdered now I got a question for you do you think that one part that like I was never like clear on was he obviously blamed I think the friend's name was Air, his friend that they killed together was Aaron, right? I think was his name. Mm -hmm. And um, he said that he only took the pictures and just watched, but Aaron was the one who killed her. And she was like, well, that's funny because Aaron said the same thing about you. And so she had already visited Aaron. So do you think that they mutually killed her? I think probably because... I mean, I don't know a whole lot about serial killers, but it seemed like the stuff in his safe were trophy-like. Yeah. And I don't really know who keeps a trophy of watching someone else commit a crime. I don't know, that, that was my main sticking point, was it really seemed well, like a, a trophy. Not that he had killed any that anybody else before Donna, but it didn't seem to mess up his life enough that it was out of the picture for him to continue doing it as things went on. As you know, some sometimes it takes that one kill for a serial killer to know that they're a serial killer. Of course, you don't have to be a serial killer to kill lots of people. Uh, he was a <laughs> pedophile or whatever. I wouldn't put much past him because he does have the times where his you know, he tries to stay in control as long as possible but there are those moments where it's just him and it's really aggressive yeah i think this is by far patrick wilson's best acting performance like do you ever feel bad for him at all <laughs> nope he's telling that story about the first time that like he had feelings for like a younger person and I think it was, like, with his niece or something who's telling that story. And right she's up. like, yeah. And then uh, Haley's like, and you know what? I feel no sympathy for you there either, Jeff. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, if you were trying to gain sympathy there, like, you're still fucked up. No. <laughs> and, I mean, it's a really disturbing story, but he's telling it like he's the victim. Just the way that, like, it seems like he believes it himself. It's just, like, so compelling to watch. But, like, you don't feel sorry for him. But, like, 
you can just tell how great of an actor he is because like he's buying what he's selling. You know what I mean? I think he, he might even shed a tear uh, more than one time in the movie, but I think in that part. Oh yeah, like and he's sweating like profusely. They just pull in so tight on his face when he thinks he's getting operated on, covered in sweat. Anytime I hear a guy talk about this movie, that's the only scene that they like seem to bring up. <laughs> oh, the the castration scene. Yeah, I, I think one of my favorite scenes, or one of the f- freakier, more horror movie type scenes, is when Haley gets out the plastic wrap. And I don't know if it's because a being suffocated sounds terrible, <laughs> to put it mildly, but that moment always makes me super uncomfortable when the plastic wrap comes out but yeah i mean it does it does the 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 fake operation scene does speak to a lot of guys i am sure (laughs) she all she also makes a good point when the he has to stop in the middle that's not really much of a punishment is it jeff (laughs) right but i guess i think i feel like that is still stable camera work And some of the more frantic moments, like the shower scene and the plastic wrap and the chair sort of put me on edge a little bit. But I think one of the cooler looking ones is the the silhouette scene at the end. Oh, yeah. Um, Like the first time I watched it, like I was completely engrossed watching it because I just recently watched it. Obviously, uh, I got kind of taken out of it because... Obviously, in 2005, I didn't watch Grey's Anatomy. Um, I think that was actually the year that it came. Grey's Anatomy came out, I think. But uh, the neighbor is Christina Yang. Um, I can't think of her name right now. Uh, Sandra, Sandra O. Oh. Sandra O. Oh is the neighbor um, that comes over and is selling the Girl Scout cookies. And it's just really funny to see Christina Yang from Grey's Anatomy, like, showing up. And it just takes you completely out of it like if you've watched that show religiously like i have a, <laughs> because she, she wasn't like a big name at that time you know um so it made sense so she obviously got her big break like after that but it was just really funny to see her show up because i didn't remember that <laughs> well should we get into like the ending of how she courses him to do what he does yes. i thought it was brilliant like it was it wasn't something that i was expecting at all right i was even trying to think last night how surprised I was when it first happened. And it's a fucking rad ending to a movie. Uh, at least that, that part. Almost unbelievable that the girl comes or like his ex-girlfriend shows up at the house and that's what makes him jump. Yeah. It, it seemed like a bit of a stretch, but I guess I don't know anybody as far as I know like that. And so into themselves that they would do that because self-preservation is such a ingrained thing in a person but usually there's a well he is completely like caught caught up at this point though like there is no out yeah it would be prison it would be humiliation it would be all those things and and you know what they say about what they do to pedophiles and baby killers or kid killers in prison. So I guess he preserved himself the way that he thought. There's that scene. There's the standoff, them talking on the roof. And Haley's getting all emotional. He is still drenched in sweat. Just everywhere. Desperation on his face. He's already snapped and uh, committed to, what does he say after, when, after he does the stabbing of the picture? If this is who I am, thank you. Some sort of weird, I don't know. I, I kind of assume that he went up on the, to the roof to kill her. And somehow she talks him into ending it. When somehow timed it perfectly that the only person besides himself that he cares about is showing up at the house. And that also, that was this, another stretch, I think, was how long was she running around outside the house yelling his name? 
and didn't notice what was going on in the roof and luckily didn't end up where he jumps. I don't know if that seemed odd to you or not. Yeah, like I said, the the timing was very off, (laughs) Um, but he can obviously hear her calling his name and um, somehow he convinces him to throw lunch himself off um, the side of the roof, which I think she was trying to get it to be done inside the house, Um, but this worked, I think, probably better because had it happened in the house, the chick probably would have came inside. And it wouldn't have panned out the way it was supposed to? Probably not. So, but yeah, it did seem like she was out there screaming for him for a long time. Like, why didn't she just, like, look up the neighbor, like, had seen her on, or had seen Haley on the roof? You're gonna, well, I mean, I guess Haley was laying low at this point, but I think that she probably would have seen him flung himself off the roof. It was fortunate for Haley or whoever they are in this, that ended up working out for their plan as far as we know they the all the ever what uh that really cool little last line but i don't know it seemed a little bit like i don't know if if he was paying attention at that point so it was a little bit more for us than anybody else about not yeah it was still an amending yes Red Riding Hood Ventures Out of the Woods. I, I don't, um, I'm going to nerd out a little bit. And one of my jobs at, when I was in school was I, they couldn't find any jobs for me in the English department. So I went to work for the folklore department and I got to set up the library. And I always like folk tales and fairy tales and stuff. And I saw some of the older, like pre Brothers Grimm versions of Little Red Riding Hood. And that didn't have a dude, the, what's it, the Huntsman? coming to save Red Riding Hood. She just, she took care of everything herself. They don't really beat us over the head with the the comparison, but I mean, Haley is wearing the red hood and walking out of the woods at the end of this. What did I neglect to say in wrapping up talking about the movie? I'm not really sure. Um, I think we kind of you know, debated of whether they actually killed the person together or not, um, whether Haley was friends with the girl that had died, um, and that's how she came about, um, whether Jeff had been, how long has Jeff actually been doing this, um, and how stupid was the girlfriend to not realize, like, if, it doesn't, like, it doesn't make sense to another person this way if, this was who he was like was he was she just like his like make him him think that he's normal type of person whatever history they had together seems every relationship that jeff character had is off and so uh, there is the point where Haley says you know if you jump now she'll just think you're some sad man that she should never have left Right. So, but she still came. It's, yeah, it's, it's fucked up. I feel like he, he used people in his, I'm sure he used everyone in his life for something. Sort of normalcy. Yeah. Or to appear normal. Yeah. Yeah. That bit of normal when he chats up 14 year old girls on AIM. Right. Song girls. Song girls talking about gold frap and whatever other <laughs> fucking bands she made up. Well, and also I kind of want to touch upon like how much of a nice guy he presents himself to be to the rest of the world because obviously uh, Grey's Anatomy chick Sandra O oh thinks that it's okay to have her daughter come over and sell him Girl Scout cookies. Yep, he's the quiet guy that kept to himself. You know, so, so, I mean, obviously, like, he does a good job of pretending to be somebody he's not. He's, he's good at staging a photo, I guess. It's just him, the photographer, setting everything up to tell the story that he wants presented. The picture he wants to paint. What 
they say sometimes faces lie. Well, that's that's true. But yeah, that's about, I think, sums it up. Well, also, I hope it wasn't too painful. But I had a great time talking with you. Oh, yeah, it was fun. Sorry my internet is, like, wonky as shit right now, so I apologize for that. No worries. I think this turned out really well. I'm sorry if there were points where, where you couldn't hear me. We did talk about that a little bit at the beginning, but especially since this is your first time on, where can people... I know we have some overlap in friends and listeners, but pimp all your stuff that you want people to know about. Um. Well, um, all of my podcasts are under the Cut to the Chase feed, um, and you can find uh, Cut to the Chase with Dan Chase and myself, and then my show, um, Skip to the Lou, which is where I just interview a bunch of people, and then there is the They're Here podcast with Derek Boo Boo, and also we have Cut to the Cartoon commentary, where we revisit cartoons, um... And then, God, am I missing one? Oh, and the Silver Party Massacre. How could I forget? My all-female show. Um, I love my girls with Heather Pell. My actual sister in real life, Nikki K. Um, Rebecca Reinhardt. And Carly. I think that's it for the episode. If you don't mind, we'll do our formal goodbye after I end the recording. Oh, no, okay. I'm good. Awesome. Well, yeah, like I said, you got to check out all those shows. Well, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> well, I am very glad that you came on. And it was a good time talking to you for real with our voices. And talking about this movie, a cool little horror movie. This will probably be the first episode in October. So worked out well that way. And like, like Haley says, well, I don't know if Haley said it, but don't go home with Lensman 319. And, I wasn't planning on it. And uh, <laughs> everybody else out there, do the same. Thank you, Lacey, and thank you, listener. He did what we all must learn to do. You and you and you and you. And you.